What's poppin' people? Welcome back to another video. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Also hit the like button if you guys are enjoying the content. Today we got a tip video. We haven't filmed a tip video in a long time. A lot of you guys have been asking for it, so we're gonna hop right into it. And today's tip video is a little different than some of the tip videos we filmed on the channel before. I have filmed a video similar to this around three years ago, and I just thought I would film a more updated version, go more in depth today, and talk about one of the best bass fishing baits in my opinion and why and three different ways to fish it to catch more bass and how versatile this bait really is by the way i do have a giveaway in this video as well but it's actually randomly throughout the video so you guys are gonna have to watch this all the way through giveaway is gonna pop up randomly throughout this episode and i'll show you guys exactly how to win so i'm actually at a very special place today it's, it's this little tiny pond right here behind me I, by the way i got cody what's up cody what's going on what's good man just trying to have a good morning out here. Trying to have a good see what morning. you can pull out of this pond. I know. So we're at this little tiny pond. And uh, if you guys know, a lot of you guys probably have seen this pond in a few episodes. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. This is where I grew up. This is actually the pond where I caught my first bass ever. Me and my granddad used to come down here and fish all the time just like a bobber in a night crawler and we used to catch some really big bass in this pond over the years you know the fish have got a lot smaller but there's still a lot of good fish in here so hopefully we'll hook you know a couple decent ones today but at the end of the day that's not the point of today's video the point is you know to show you about this bait different ways to fish it and to help you guys catch more fish but it feels good to get out on this pond a lot of great memories were made me and my granddad used to just come out here all the time i believe my first bass ever was actually in this pond right here. And we caught some really big ones. I mean, we used to catch a bunch of seven and eight pounders in this pond, just on a basic little night crawler. So let's go ahead and hop over here. I brought one rod with me today and a pack of baits. Let's go ahead and rig up. I'm gonna show you guys the rig that we're gonna be throwing today. And then we're going to show you guys exactly how to fish it, and different ways you can fish it. And I promise you, this is gonna help you guys catch a lot more fish. A lot of you guys have been asking, you know, Noah, what is a versatile rod and reel combo? You know, what should I use if I want to tie on a bunch of different baits or if I only have the money to go spend on one fishing combo? So let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. So on this combo that I brought out today, I have a Custom Pro by Luz. And if you were going to get a bait caster, I, I don't really, I'm not very specific on the gear ratios. I like seven one to ones, seven three to one gear ratios. If I need to go slower, then I'll just slow down my retrieve. I don't really mess around with five gear ratio reels. If I do, it's more than likely I'm going to be cranking. So as far as the reel grows, seven one to one gear ratio in the rod, this is very important. So you guys are looking for a versatile combo if you're only looking to buy one. In my opinion, my favorite is a seven foot to seven foot three medium heavy. You're gonna be able to throw chatter baits on that combo. You're gonna be able to throw spinner baits. You're gonna be able to throw Texas rigs. You're gonna be able to throw shaky heads, even some smaller jigs you can get away with on this rod. So if you guys are looking for one just to buy, you can throw just about anything. You know, you're not wanting to go out and buy like five combos, seven foot, the seven foot three medium heavy that's going to do the trick the one that i have today is actually a mock two by loose this is a seven two medium heavy fast action and uh you can tell right here it's got a good bit of tip as well and it's not a meat stick when i'm out here fishing you know i like a little bit of tip on my rod some people are going to say you know you need a heavy or medium heavy i think that's all you need and you can throw just about anything on this. And I believe when you have a lot more tip with your rod, you can be a lot more accurate with your cast. So yeah guys, if you're looking for one rod and reel, medium heavy, seven one to one gear ratio reel, that's all you need. So let's go ahead and hop into the baits. All you need for this rig is you need a three aught extra wide gap hook, EWG right here. Very basic, you can go get them at Walmart and get them at Bass Pro, get them at Tackle Warehouse. You just need like a three aught extra wide gap hook. You can even go up to a four aught if you need to. And you're also gonna need a little bullet weight, which we got right here. And this is actually just a little half ounce or a quarter ounce bullet weight. This is one fourth ounce. This is actually a tungsten, so it's gonna be a little bit smaller, um, but still heavier weight. It's one fourth ounce. If you guys are wondering about the fluorocarbon that I'm throwing today, this is actually 17 pound. That's what I'm comfortable with. You can throw this on 12 pound, 15 pound, 17 pound. Uh, you can get away with anything. Depending on the cover that you're fishing as well, if you're flipping like very heavy cover, you're gonna want you know some, some thick line. Let's go ahead and tie this up real quick. So we're gonna put our bullet weight on the line just like that. So once you got your weight on your line, we're gonna get our hook. Like I said, three yacht, extra wide gap. We're gonna tie this bad boy on. If you guys are wondering what knot I'm tying, me personally, I love the uni knot. I tied the polymer knot for years, but 
over the last, I'd say, probably seven, eight years, I've been tying a union knot. It's a very strong knot. If you guys want to check it out or you want to see a video on how to tie it, if you actually type in Kicking Their Bass TV Best Fishing Knot on YouTube, I have a video that shows you guys exactly how to tie a union knot. Tie that on there, wet her line, cinch her down, boom, just like that. Go right here, cut our tag in, boom, just like that. Before you guys say this is just a regular Texas rig video, the ways that we're going to be showing you how to work it today is a lot more advanced than your basic Texas rig. So don't think it's just a basic little Texas rig video. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it. Even if you guys know about the Texas rig, I really want to show you guys what I'm going to talk about today because it's going to help you catch more fish. So moving on to the bait that we're going to be throwing on this Texas rig today, it's actually just a standard little rage crawl right here. And this is a little natural color. This is actually green pumpkin, purple, and gold. It's a nice little color. Um, it's just a regular green pumpkin. It's got a little bit of purple and gold flake. It's a natural color. If you guys were wondering, I have a lot of people ask me about colors as well. If you're fishing a lot of ponds, the majority of the time you're gonna be fishing dirty water. I highly suggest going with like a June bug, a black and blue, a black and red. That's gonna be really good in dirty water. If you guys are fishing water that's a little more clean, which the pond that we're out today has a good bit of visibility in it, you can go with a green pumpkin, you can go with a watermelon, watermelon red, um, green pumpkin with different colored flakes in it. All those are going to work well. But the simple rule of thumb, clear water, green pumpkins, watermelons, dirty water, black and blues, June bugs, your darker colors. So we got the Rage Crawl right here. I'm going to show you guys exactly how I rig it up here on this hook. So we got our extra wide gap. All you're going to do, you have the bottom side of the bait. It's got a line through the bottom of it right there. You got the tip of your hook. So what you're going to want to do is go through the head of the bait all the way up to where that hook bends. All right, stick it in there just like that. You're gonna pop the hook through. You're gonna slide your bait all the way to the eye of the hook, and then you're gonna rotate it. Boom, just like that. So you have your bait just like this. A lot of people ask me as well, how do you get your bait so perfectly on the hook? And this helps out a lot. So. When you have your bait and you have your hook, you can just go ahead, once you know naturally, you know where to penetrate the hook, you know, you can just go ahead and keep it right there and it's gonna be flush. But my way of knowing to do it perfectly and straight on is to line your bait up on the hook. You got this back side right here. Right where this back side hits the bait, that's exactly where you're gonna to wanna to have that hook penetrate. See, that's where that back side's laying. We're gonna penetrate that hook right there in the bait. Push the bait up a little bit get that hook to come through and boom. See how that lays flat just right there? You got that crawl on perfectly. But there's one more thing that we wanna do. When you're fishing a lot of these ponds, even lakes, I mean, this can work anywhere that you go. There can be a lot of grass, there can be a lot of slop, and you can be throwing this around a lot of cover. So you don't want this hook exposed. If this hook's exposed, you're gonna be hooking a lot of the wood, you're gonna be hooking a lot of grass, getting a lot of slop on that bait. So what I like to do is pull the bait up a little bit and bury the front of the hook, boom, right in the bait. So now that tip isn't gonna hook on all that grass. You're not gonna get stuck in that cover as easily. And uh, as you can tell, you know, I'm not getting hooked right here. It's buried in the bait. And when you get a fish to bite it, don't think that this is gonna mess up your hookup ratio. It's gonna hook perfectly in the top of their mouth. All right, so that's the rig that we're gonna be messing with today. Now let's go ahead and get out here, show you guys how we fish this bait. We're gonna show you three different ways to catch fish on this bait and why this is such a versatile rig right here. Because this bait right here, normally what you do is flip it around cover and you work it on the bottom. But there's also a couple different ways that you can work this bait to catch more fish and have a different presentation with this crawl right here. So let's go ahead and start this and talk about the different ways to work this bait. So, you know, your basic Texas rig, like I said, you're just going to drag on the bottom. You're going to work it on the bottom and that's going to catch you a ton of fish. You're going to flip it around some cover, you're going to throw it in the middle of ponds, you're going to throw it on some lakes, you're going to throw it on some laydowns. Very basic. There's also another way to work this. You can reel this bait in. Then after that, you could also reel this thing on top, like a top water, and still catch a lot of fish. So where we're gonna start is working this bait on the bottom. I'm gonna show you guys different retrieves, um, depending on the condition, depending on how the fish are biting, on how to get more bites. There's gonna be some days that you throw this bait out there and just drag it on the bottom, and you're gonna get a ton of bites. And there's gonna be some days that they don't wanna eat it like that, and you're gonna have to give it little hops. 
then there's also going to be other days that you're not even going to be able to move the bait. And the fish aren't going to pick it up unless the bait is just dead on the bottom. So let's go ahead and start casting around, talking about what we're doing today, and see if we can catch some fish along the way. So as you guys know, bass relate to cover. So whether I'm coming out of a lake, a pond, a river, I don't care what it is, bass, especially largemouth bass, they love wood. They love to tug up against it. I don't know if you guys ever go to Bass Pro and go look at the fish tank in there, but you can tell that bass like to be tucked up against something. Therefore, when you have laydowns, trees in a pond, those bass are gonna position up on those laydowns. So, when we're looking at this pond, there's not too much cover in the water. Over there, we got a big tree. Over here, you can tell we have two little tiny stumps. There used to be a dock right here, and it got knocked down. Now there's only two stumps in the water. What I really like about this is there's not a ton of cover in the water, so the cover that's presented, there's more than likely gonna be fish on. So let's go ahead and throw at these two little stumps right here. There should be a bass on it, and we're gonna work this bait on the bottom. So let's go ahead and throw out. Boom, right there. We're gonna check our drag as well. I had a different bait on here before. And so let's talk about working this bait. When you throw it out there, especially when you're on some cover, what are you gonna to wanna to do? So you're gonna, one, let the bait hit the bottom. And two, what I like to start off with is just hop in this bait. So what I mean by that is you, you reel up the slack in your line and you're just hopping your bait just like that. I got one right here. <laughs> little tiny guy right there. It took him a second to eat it. Look how fat this little bass is. Beautiful colors. Look at that rage curl hanging out of his mouth. Couldn't even talk to you guys about what I was doing. I already had a little one biting it. I knew there was going to be one on that cover especially when you find some little isolated stumps like that. But look how pretty that little fish is. It's not big at all, but it's just beautiful markings. Let me tell you, look how fat that little bass is too. He's got a little belly on him. That's pretty, let's get him back in the water. I cannot believe that. Look how, he's just a little chunk. A little fat dude. Thank you, bud. Whoop. There he goes. So what I was getting to with that cast was, you know, throwing it out there, how I'll start off the day with this Texas rig, let it hit the bottom and I just straight hop it. All right, now I'm throwing it out there. I'm just hopping that bait on the bottom. That's one way to work this. Then you're gonna have some days that you get out in the water. The fishing's a lot more tough. And those fish aren't gonna want this bait hopped. You know, you're gonna wanna throw this bait out there, just like this. Boom, let her hit the bottom again. And there's gonna be some of those days that those fish just want this bait dragged on the bottom. So all I do is shift my body, point my rod out, drag this bait on the bottom. And sometimes that's going to trigger those bass. This is what those bass are going to want that day. You guys are going to know that fish aren't going to want the same thing every single time that you go out. Depending on the conditions, depending on the weather, depending on how active the bass are, you're going to have to change up your retrieve to how the fish want it that day. So that's two different ways to work it. You got where we're hopping it on the bottom. Now you got where we're dragging it on the bottom. One of my favorite ways to work a bait, especially when it's super tough, Throw the bait out there. You know, we got that cover right there. Got those two little stumps. Boom. Throw it right there. And I just leave the bait. Just like that. Every once in a while, give it a couple little pops. And just let the bait sit. So if you have some cover in a pond, a lake, wherever it's at, you know there's fish there, just dead stick that bait on there. Don't move it much. Every once in a while, just kind of give it a couple little pops. Let those legs flutter in the water. And that can also be a great way to catch some bass. A lot of people have been asking Noah, why do you go like this with your rod and start tapping your rod? This is actually a great bed fishing secret. You can catch a lot of fish by tapping the end of your rod. But what we noticed, me and Cody had been going out in the river a lot and I'll go down this bank, I'll be fishing a ton of laydowns, And then all of a sudden I'll start giving my rod a bunch of pops at the bottom, giving that bait a little flutter. And then we start getting a ton of bites. We both witnessed it on the river and it's crazy. You know, I throw 15 casts down a bank, not have any bites. Right when I start doing this with my rod, the fish are hammering it. So that's another way you can work your bait. You throw it out there, you got it on your cover, whether it's a cypress tree, whatever it is, some lay downs in the water, you let your bait hit the bottom. What, what you wanna do is you don't wanna have slack in your line. See how I'm slacking my line right here? You wanna have your line to where it's pretty tight and all I do is I grab the bottom of my rod, just like this, and I start hitting it. As you can tell, my line's just jumping in the water right there. So what that bait's doing underwater 
as I'm tapping this, the bait is staying in the same spot. So that's why it's great when you're throwing it up on cover. You know, you're throwing it up on a tree, by the time you pop it out a couple times, you're already off the lay down. This technique, you can throw it up on the tree, you can keep your line tight, and just barely give your rod a little bit of taps. That's gonna keep the bait in the hot spot of where the fish is at, and it's also gonna give it just a little bit of movement to trigger that bass to eat the bait. That's also another great technique when working the bait on the bottom. So we talked about you know, throwing your bait out there, letting it hit the bottom, hopping it off the bottom. We talked about adjusting to where if the fish aren't biting that, you just drag the bait on the bottom. We also talked about dead sticking the bait on very tough days and the little tiny rod technique. And I'm telling you guys, a lot of you have been asking about that. You need to go try it. Not many people are doing this. A lot of people do wild bed fishing, but I do it year round. If I think there's a fish on a tree and I just can't get him to bite, I'm gonna play with the bottom of my rod and try to trigger that fish to eat that crawl. Because all you're doing when you're hitting that bait, all this thing's doing, you know, it's, it's angled down like this, your crawl's gonna float up. And, this, and these little legs, they're just gonna be vibrating. So if that bass is nose down on it, you know, you're up here on the lay down, you're just kind of hopping it and that, that doesn't do much to trigger them off to eat it. Once you start hitting your rod, these little legs are gonna start to vibrate and that can trigger the bass to boom, attack it. Boom, you can get really aggressive, boom, eat the bait. So that is one way to work this bait is on the bottom. You're working the bottom of the water column and that's your traditional way that you would work a Texas rig. You know, say the fish aren't eating this thing on the bottom or you already threw it on all the cover and now you're like, you know what? I wanna cover some water, which I love doing. What, what you can also do with this bait that many people don't do, not many people do this, is you can just throw this bait out there and steady retrieve the bait in, just like that. Just like if you're throwing like a little swim jig or a little swim bait or anything it is, this crawl is gonna work in the same manner. You know, you're just gonna reel this bait, it's gonna have those legs kicking, it can look like a little bait fish. So, you know, you can just walk down the bank, or wherever you're fishing, and just steadily, oh my gosh, I have one right there. So that just shows you can still get bites on that. You know, people think, oh my gosh, look at this, guys. Don't do it to me. Oh my gosh, there's no way. So I just retied this bait, but what I was getting at, just remember, there's no rules of fishing, guys. People are gonna tell you you need to fish this way, this way, that way, that way. But everything with fishing, there's no rules. And you can always break the rules while fishing. You know, people that would tie up this bait, they're not gonna go reel this thing. They're gonna work it on the bottom, but that doesn't mean that you can't reel this bait. I've caught a ton of fish on rivers, lakes, and everything reeling this bait, just like a little bait fish. So let's go ahead and go back to talking to that before I, you know, got that bite and it messed me all up. So I was just throwing out there, you know, just steadily reeling this bait in. It's a steady retrieve, nothing crazy. And when it comes to moving baits, one thing that I like to do is give my baits a little sporadic movement. So what I mean by that is I throw my bait out there, I'm gonna start reeling it in. There can be a bass behind that bait just tailing it, and he might not wanna eat that bait. So one thing that I like to do, as I'm reeling it every once in a while, give your rod a little pop, or give it a little fast retrieve. Do something to where that bait's gonna have a bunch of weird movement and it's gonna key that bass off the bite. That bass is a predator, and when he sees something, he's gonna hone in on it, especially if that bait goes and does something crazy, he's gonna go ahead and strike. So when you're throwing that bait out there, don't hesitate to steadily retrieve it, and every once in a while, just kinda pop your rod. Give that bait just a little hop, or every, single, every once in a while, you know, kinda speed it up and drop it. Just give it a bunch of different movement because you never know when there's a bass behind your bait and you know he's just not wanting to strike, but once you do that, boom, you get bit. So let's go ahead and go down this bank right here. Let's steadily retrieve this bait and see if we can catch one down here. So we're just walking down this bank right here. And one thing I want to talk about too while I'm at it a great way to cover water, especially in little ponds like this, is throwing parallel with that bank. A majority of your bass are going to be between the bank and 10 foot off. You know, you can have a deep drop off, especially depending on what time of year it is. But since we're in the springtime, these bass pushing up shallow, a great way to cover water and to make sure you're in the strike zone is I like to just walk down the bank and just throw parallel with it, just like this. Reel your bait back. 
we can cover and move water very fast. And I got one right there. Look how tiny these guys are. Guys, this is, it's just so crazy because this pond, you know, like I said, this is where I grew up fishing. I caught like my first bass ever in this pond. And me and my granddad used to catch some hogs in here. I mean, straight hogs. And just over the years, these fish have got a lot smaller, but there's still some good ones in here because last year I actually caught a couple really big bass, but pretty little fish. At least they're fat and healthy. That's good to see. All right, let's get this guy back in the water. Pretty little dude. Thank you, bud. There you guys. That was our first fish that we caught real in the bait. We've had a few other bites, like off camera. I was just playing around, throwing out there, and they were eating it. But uh, that just shows you, you know, that little strike zone right off the bank. Just throw in parallel with that thing. Reel in this bait, you don't have to work a Texas rig on the bottom, guys. That's all this video is about right here. You can break the rules of fishing. You don't have to do everything on how the textbook tells you. You know, go out there, fish baits differently. We're gonna throw this bait like this and reel it back in. A couple more casts down this bank. I think we might be able to catch in, catch a decent fish out here. Oh, had another one. Look at that. Still my little pincher. Right there, right? Right when I popped that bait. You know, I was talking about steady retrieving it, popping it. Right when I popped it, that's when he hit it. Give it that little movement. See if we can get him to eat. Same thing. Oh, that was a better one. I should have hooked that better. I saw him right there. He's about a pound and a half. But right the same way, right when I kind of gave it that little movement, that's when that fish ate it. Oh, that was another, gosh, that was a better one. These fish are better in this corner. Right here, covering this water with this cross. Crazy how many bites we're getting. Crazy how many bites. You know, if I just had one, one rod with me today, guys, and this is all I had, I could do just about anything with it. You know, I could still throw up here and do this, look. I could still throw up on that tree and work this bait on the bottom. Or, you know, I see some fish popping some bait up on the shore and just throw it right in there and they can eat it as I'm reeling it. I'm gonna be honest, I'm having more bites reeling this bait today and working it on the bottom. Just saying these fish are, you know, a little bit more active. They might want something to react to, something to trigger off on. So another good thing about that. All right, guys, that's enough. He just took my last little pincher. I'm gonna have to walk back and get another crawl. But that is two different ways to fish that bait. We talked about fishing out on the bottom, covering the bottom of the water column. We also talked about throwing this bait around, re reeling it as a moving bait, and still being able to catch fish on it. So let's go over here, get another crawl, and I'm gonna show you guys the final way to catch more fish just on this bait. I just got a new crawl, I'm gonna rig it up on this. Little T rig. Cody actually brought up a really good point when we were walking back over here. And he was saying, you know, right right over there where I had one take one of my crawls off, does that mean you should change your crawl completely? Not necessarily. You know, not if I'm fishing a tournament and a fish eats one of my pinchers off, I'm more than likely gonna put on a different crawl. But as far as me just fun fishing, I'm probably just gonna roll with it, guys. And you know, like we were saying before. There's no rules to fishing. You don't have to have everything perfect. You still have a little bit of vibration with that one crawl on there. And you guys saw, once I got that bit, got that little pincher bit off, I still went down that bank and I had like five more bites. You know, maybe I'll have more bites with this, but just know that you don't have to change it out. That, that was a cool little thing that Cody brought up and I was like, you know what? It's cool to talk about. So now that we covered the bottom of the water column, then we covered the middle of the water column. Now we can cover the top of the water column with this bait. So that's why this bait is so versatile, guys. You can fish on the bottom, middle, and top. You can cover everything and still catch a lot of fish on it. 
So I don't know if you guys know, but they make soft plastic frogs. Like if you had a horny toad by zoom and that toad is made, you know, soft plastic and you sit there and you reel it across the water. This crawl is very similar. So what I like to do is just throw it out there and what, what's going to happen are these little legs when you're reeling this at the top of the water, they're just going to kick. You know, I'll show you right here. It looks really good. I'm telling you this. I mean, it's just as good as if you're throwing like a horny toad. It, it'll catch them. It looks the same way too. I'll throw that bait out there. Keep my rod tip up and just reel it at the top. And you see how those legs are kicking in the water? Let's do it one more time. Let's reel that bait in at the top. Boom. So you literally have a top water. Literally have a top water. This is a bait that you normally just fish on the bottom and we can sit here and reel it like a top water as well. That, that is just the cool thing about this. And you can just catch fish in so many different ways with this bait. Just throwing it out there. I keep my rod tip high because you do have a weight on this bait. And I just make sure that those tails are kicking at the top of the water. Boom. And look at that. You cannot tell the difference between that and a frog right there. I mean, you can't. Not one bit. And one other thing I like to do, I like to throw swim baits the same way. But I mean, this, like I said, this bait can do just about anything. So let's go ahead and go over here. We are in the springtime. We should be able to have a few of these bass come up for top water. These fish are starting to get more active. Only thing that I'm thinking about is we had a cold front last night. Could have messed up those fish a little bit. But then again, this pond, I mean, they bite pretty easy in here. So we might be able to get one to come up. So let's walk over there where all that scum's on the water. Work our way down this bank where that lay down is. See if we can get one over here. Dude, what? Dude, that was like first cast. You can't even make that up. We literally caught one on the bottom, just like that. Then we're reeling the bait, have all those bites. And then like right there, just like on the top water. It's just so cool to me how you can get one bait like that one bait and catch all these fish doing three different things like that's that's they're not big man they're not big at all i could just take a little bite out of him pop him on a hot dog bun but i mean as quavo would say that's a fish stick yo yeah, hey, a little fish stick did you say that's a fish stick that's a fish that's stick, a fish stick i've seen right. one ever <laughs> but that's guys that is so cool to me knowing that you can come out here with a bait that you would normally work on the bottom and just fish it so many different ways and have bites all the, I mean, I mean, that's just so cool to me. If you guys enjoyed this tip video, please hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys would like. Oh gosh. If you guys would like to see some more tip videos, let me know. If you could also drop a comment down below on the next tip video that you guys would like to see from my channel. Um, you know, this one's very basic. You know, I tried to not get too advanced in some of these tip videos just so I can get very relatable with them. And I like doing a lot of these out at the ponds, but if you want to see some tip videos like on the river or on some of the big lakes or Lake Lanier, you know, my home lake, let me know in the comment section down below. I want to know y'all's feedback. If you guys are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.